Hello Internet and welcome to CodeBig. In this video, we will be going through memoization in JavaScript. I hope I got you excited, so let's get started. Welcome back guys. So let's start off by understanding what is memoization. Memoization is a technique for storing values written by a function to avoid having to redo computation that have already been performed previously. If that sounds confusing, just hold on. I will be breaking it down to you so it makes more sense. Well, now that you know the definition, can you guess where we use memoization and why is it so helpful? This technique is very useful when we have a function which is called regularly and when its computation is expensive. So, in real life, the concept of memoization becomes very important whenever you are working on building a software for custom asset tracking and live tracking. Because in those cases, you will be calling a function repeatedly and the cost of computation is expensive. But let's keep this video simple and learn the concept of memoization by looking at one example we have all encountered in our programming career, the Fibonacci series. As you see, I'm on REPL, which is an online code editor. You can also find a link to it in the description below if you want to follow along. Now, I copy and pasted a simple function that calculates the sum of Fibonacci series. This is the most basic coding interview question someone can ask you. Although you don't get asked to print the sum of Fibonacci series always, you will surely be asked to write a function that solves a problem recursively. And once you do that, you will be asked to optimize your solution and this is where memoization comes in. The solution to Fibonacci series looks simple, right? We have a function called Fibonacci, which takes a number as its only argument and inside the function, we have only two conditions. The first one being, if the number is less than or equal to zero, then we return zero. And if it's equal to one, we return one. Then, the next line is where the magic happens. Since a recursive function is a function that calls itself over and over again, we are calling Fibonacci function by passing num-1 and num-2 as its two parameters into our Fibonacci function. And since we want to print the sum of the Fibonacci series, we are adding it and returning the value as well. Now, if we run this code, we get phi as the output which is absolutely correct. But there is one small problem in this. The time taken to solve this problem is big O of 2 to the power of n. And if you look at the big O cheat sheet, it tells us that our solution falls in the horrible category. And let's be honest, writing horrible code does not land us a job, right? Before I tell you how this can be optimized using memoization, I want to show you why our solution is so bad. This visual representation shows a tree structure of running our Fibonacci function with phi as its input. Do you see a problem in this repetition? If you notice keenly, we are calculating the fib of 2 value 3 times and the fib of 3 value 2 times. That's awful, right? Like, we get the solution of calculating fib of 2, that is 1, and we use it to calculate the value of fib of 3, which turns out to be 2. And we are literally discarding the calculated values and recalculating it from the very beginning. And this is why our time complexity is horrible. So, the way we rewrite our Fibonacci function is by introducing the concept of memoization or it can be also referred to as caching. Let's say our Fibonacci function accepts two arguments instead of one. It accepts a number and a memo argument which is initially set to an empty object. Well, that makes sense, right? Because when we run our function initially, we only pass it a value of phi. So at that time, we will be setting the value of memo to be an empty object. Let me just real quick console log memo and the value of num down here so we can see how memo plays along. Next, let me just head over to the return statement and tell instead of returning the sum of Fibonacci series directly, I tell it to use the current value of num as the key and store the result of addition of the Fibonacci function in memo. 
Now we need to pass memo down in both these recursive function calls as well. The final thing left for us to do is add a condition that says if memo of num value exists, then just return the value and exit out of the recursive function. Cool. Just by following these simple steps, we have drastically broke down the time complexity from 2 to the power of n, which falls in the horrible category, to big O to the power of n, which falls in the fair category. How cool is that? If we run this function now, you see the result on the right and it says the first time down the loop, the memo is an empty object as expected. Let me just bring back the visuals so you can easily understand the rest of it. Next, we see the number is 1 and we also see the value of memo has a key of 2 and its value is set to 1. This calculation is happening in this part of the branch. Next, it says the number is 2 and we see memo has keys 2 and 3 with values 1 and 2 respectively. And finally, when it says the num is 3, we have all the 3 keys with the respective values. Although, we see we get the same result, our solution is much faster and cleaner. If you look at the diagram, you can think of these num that are in the output as the branch level but in the reverse order. Mostly in the real world, you want to write a memoization function that takes in another function as its argument and returns a memoized version of the function. While there are many JavaScript libraries like fastmemoize.js, imemoized and so on, it's always a good practice to know instead of relying on third-party libraries or writing a custom wrapper around it, you could always create your own version of the memoization function and be done with it, so you can play along in any manner that suits you. This is the end of the video guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If so, drop a like and subscribe. See you in the next video, happy coding until then.